There's Hamilton. So, what I'm hoping to show you here is how we were short with this the original pin that we had purchased, or I had purchased. Uh, as you can see here, let me swing it up a little bit. The hole is, you know, right here. And let's see if we can get a better angle, because I'm in shade. <laughs> the hole's right here, but as you can see, even though it's got a little edge on it, this pin just isn't gonna fit. Let me show it right here. It's just not gonna get in there. There's no way I could get this ramp pin pushed over enough to allow it to sit in there. <coughs> Hopefully you can see how this ramp edge is lined up with this hinge, stopping the pin from going any further. <coughs> Sorry. So what I'm gonna do is scoot you back a little bit and I'm gonna show you the difference in length. So you can see here, this is the original pin. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is the new pin. It's so much longer. Fortunately, it doesn't go out past the uh, fenders of it. And, but it's gonna move around a lot. So I'm gonna, well I guess it doesn't matter if I put it in this direction or this direction. But, yeah, I guess it really is six and one half dozen the other, so I probably will make it go in this direction. But I got a little trick that I'm gonna try to, and you can see this locking ring. It, it locks next to, but it doesn't go around. So I'm gonna try a little trick on here once I get the, the pin in. So let me get this pin popped out. Ooh, I bumped you guys. <laughs> I bumped you, sorry about that. And now, we're just gonna, this is how it was set up originally. You can see, with the long pin in here, we're in, the ramp is securely attached, and we've got this pin in. So, I thought, and others might think as well, that this pin itself is enough to keep it locked in, and there's no way you're, it's gonna pop out. But, for, for whatever reason, when we were hitting bumps on the road, something got in there, this got knocked loose. As you can see, it's just gotta go that, that quarter inch, you know, maybe got twisted, and oh, you can see it right there. So even just getting twisted like that and getting a little bit of pressure from a bump, I mean, those roads up to the, on the property are very rough. It just get, needs to get started and it pops out. So what I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna try to prevent this ring from being able to be popped out uh, unwillingly. And so to do that, I'm just gonna use some, well this came off of a packaging packet for something you know those little twist ties uh, so what I'm gonna do I'll just try this shorter one is I'm gonna feed this around the outside or feed this around so that it's on both sides of goes to the back side I guess of the ring Hi everybody, Keel here on an even keel. I was editing the video for today and I noticed that due to the heat problems that we had yesterday, uh, I missed part of the clip and the camera stopped working. So what I thought I would do is just come out here real quick and show you the final piece uh, 
for wrapping and what I hope is going to prevent the hinge pin from popping out. So I'm back outside by the trailer and what we have here is that hinge pin and what you can see is I took that twist tie, packing tie, whatever you want to call it and I brought it around the back side. I put two twists around the ring and then I twisted the two ends together. My hope is that by doing this that this pin won't be able to pop out anymore because this ring isn't going to be able to move without me physically cutting or untwisting and undoing this piece right here so we shouldn't lose this hinge pin anymore. My intention is to do the same thing with the uh, spring pins just to play it safe and that's that's what I wanted to be able to show you. Welcome back. Uh, this second part of the video, I'm intending to wrap this IBC tote right here with a 75% blackout curtain if cars will ever stop going by. <laughs> And so uh, the purpose is to prevent LG buildup. Uh, now the, I've got, had this water in this tank now for a few months and there has been zero LG buildup here. But the intention is to buy several IBC totes and then uh, catch rainwater off the roof of the house here in the valley as a test system for storage up on the property. So I'm trying to source some IBC totes that I can do that with. Uh, they're in short supply right now with everybody staying home. People are trying a whole bunch of different projects. But once I get that sourced, I plan on using PVC pipe as my gutters instead of vinyl gutters or aluminum gutters as a cost saving measure to feed into several of these IBC totes. Uh, the place that I normally go to sells IBC totes, these 275s, for $150. And if you buy like a larger water tank, uh, you know, rainwater storage, it's it comes out to be about a dollar a gallon. Whereas these IBC totes are roughly 55 cents a gallon. So it just makes cost saving sense uh, to get these and it allows me to spend money a little bit more frugally and add to the system as needed. So without further ado, what I'm gonna do is take you over to the trailer. I've rolled out the uh, shade cloth. Uh, I haven't cut it yet. I wanted to be able to show you to cut it, but I took some measurements of the IBC tote and we will uh, make that cut at 17 foot. So the IBC tote itself, I measured from this bar to its opposite bar and then from this bar to its opposite bar. So this is about four and a half feet. And this is, or, uh, yeah, about four and a half feet from this bar all the way around to its matching bar. And this is four feet from this bar all around to this matching bar. So taking that, that's eight and a half feet, doubling it gives us 17 feet. Um, just redoing the math to confirm it on here on camera. So I'll be making a 17 foot cut with this and then I plan on using basically shade cloth needle and thread. I'll start it on this one, uh, wrap it a couple times here. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to get this pan off. I think it's just a piece of metal that's just clipped on there looks like. Oh, maybe not. Uh, anyway, we'll get it started here. Try to get some thread around the bottoms because this is pushed out. And get it going all the way around and end on this side. Going around the stanchion as well as through the shade cloth to, to lock it in place. So I'm going to do a, a clockwise wrap on it. That's the intention. Then I'll need to do another cut 
for a piece on top. And it's really dirty up here on the top. So I probably should go get it cleaned off and everything like that. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the top of this IBC tilt cleaned off and we will try to get this wrapped tonight. Uh, so, Okay, so now we're over at the trailer and as you can see down on that end, I've got the tape measure hooked to the end and we're gonna bring it all the way down to here and remember I said 17 feet so that's right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, whoo, come on, Mr. Camera, focus. All right, so we got our 17 feet right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna folk, uh, we're going to make a cut all the way across and then we'll open this up. So, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Uh, we're going to take a, a, make our little snip. Remember Bob showing me this. And got our little snip. Let me pull that out of the way. And now I'm just going to go right across. Cut this screen fabric. I thought I would just be able to follow a line, but the underside of the cloth is not wanting to cooperate. Okay, so we've got our cut. So as you can see, it folds open into multiple or into a single layer you can i hope you can uh, probably not so now what we'll do is we'll carry this shank cloth over and we'll start wrapping the toe okay so what i've done here is <laughs> got the dogs coming is i took that sheet of 17 foot of shade cloth and i wrapped it around i got it close to the bottom to the ground here it's not quite touching maybe a couple inches and i wrapped it all the way around and to be honest it's it's a little long so i wanted to go from about here or here all the way around and i wanted to stop maybe a foot or two or, or one bar over this actually goes all the way around to the next corner. So I probably cut in an extra foot or two long. But that's okay, learning. Uh, I don't know if you can see the top. We'll have to get a different view of the top, but basically it's since the tote is only about four feet tall, we have two foot of extra cloth on the top on each side. So that allow us to uh, stitch a cover on top and still have access to the the tank uh, opening on the top. Now I haven't really thought of how I'm going to do the the valve at the bottom of the tank but hopefully as I stitch this together we can figure that out. So what I have here is just some cord that you can get. It's basically sunshade uh, cord for going around metal bars so that you can mount it on a uh, roof or a side panel so that it will stick you know it will stick stick it's not stick it will stay in place when the wind blows and all that kind of stuff so basically you just will penetrate the cloth and go around the bars that you want to go around. And so uh, I'm not going to cut it ahead of time. I'm going to pull this all the way through because I don't know how much we should need. I'm thinking with the loops and everything, probably one and a half times the height of the 
of the tote, but as this is an experiment, we're gonna find out. So I added some, some clips at the top just to hold it in place. And I'm gonna try to get a closer shot so you can actually see me doing the, the stitching. And I wanna slide this down onto this bar. <coughs> now this tote is full of water so I also need to figure out how I'm going to get the needle behind this, because behind the tote, because there's a lot of pressure on there. So I just I need to figure that out. I might have to do some pushing or of that nature. So let's get set up for the close-up shot. So in an effort to be transparent, uh, I couldn't put enough pressure and be able to get the needle behind and hold the cloth in place. So I decided to let the water out of the tote. Well, I, I don't want to say I broke the tote, but I definitely bent the, the lines right here, you can see. And so <laughs> it, it's causing indentations in here so <laughs> yep that whole mechanically disinclined bit is pretty much the way it is and so what I'm gonna do now instead of stitching this on is I'm going to try and get these bars off because they use these little star I don't know what they call them uh, these star clips right here star screws I don't have a big star screw bit that big, so I'm just gonna try to jerry-rig it with a straight, a straight blade and get that taken off. What I'd like to do is get those bars straightened so that they're not putting pressure down onto the, onto the IBC tote. So, yeah, again, keel learning and remembering about physics and you know, you need to let air in to have the water go out. And it just, it, the weight of the water created quite the vacuum causing those bars to bend. So not ever having really played with IBC totes, that's, that's what you get. And now <laughs> I let all that water out and it's, it's pulled up around the, the IBC tote. So I just left a nice big footprint in the dirt. I'm sure here in Arizona, this the, the ground is really going to like it. We haven't had any rain since, any appreciable rain since at least March. And so, yeah, so I'm going to take those, take that shut screen down and take those bars off. So the bars came off fairly simply. So for that, now over here on the far side of the tote, there's some deformation. And so we need to try to figure out how we can straighten these bars. Okay, so I got the bars fairly straight. Use the trailer as some leverage. And so I'm gonna get these in here. And before they were screwed with the, the lips up, I think, I think this time I'm gonna try to screw it with the lips down so I can try to bring the tote and lift it up and maybe pull that kink out of it.
<laughs> well, we made it to the end of another video. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, the camera is overheating again. I'm waiting for my ice pack to refreeze, so unfortunately I can't keep my camera cool at this time, and I need to get this video out for you all today. So I just want to say we got the trailer fixed. I'm not going to do anything more with the shade cloth until I have a camera that can uh, film in the sun again. So I need to get my ice pack filled. I've been out a couple hours already this morning. Uh, the trailer was yesterday evening and the cut for the shade cloth was yesterday evening and in my that's when I used my ice pack and the sun's come up and just pounding on the camera so not making excuses I want to get this video out for you guys it'll take me a couple hours to get this edited so I'm hoping to have this up by noon my time which is about three o'clock Eastern and I just want to thank you for your time, you know, watching me do all these things, trying to get the property up and running. Uh, we've got some big surprises coming to the, the house here in the valley. <laughs> One never knows, can't predict the future, although I worry enough about it. And so with that, I'd just like to again say thank you. Truly, it's appreciated all your time spent on here uh, watching me do stuff when you could be doing anything else it's truly appreciated if you have any comments uh, suggestions uh, I'll take them uh, it's, I'm not at a point of no return it's all learning I mean I'll scrap the whole thing and start all over again if I can figure out a better way again this is Keel's experiment I'm on an even keel trying to figure out how to stay on this even keel because I list badly port and starboard. Uh, I go through my, my moments and this is all just trying to get me calm. So thank you again. Please like and subscribe. Click that bell notification and have yourselves a great weekend. So I thought I'd throw a little surprise in here at the end of this video clip hear me quite frequently talking about staying hydrated and I, I drink a lot of tea so what I thought I would show you is you know the the super brief process I use to make my tea sun tea so what I do is I get four bags of regular tea bags of I use black tea I'm sure if you like flavored tea you could use that too and in the past my sons and I we enjoy pickles so what we do is we keep like the large one gallon pickle jars uh, we've got several of them uh, we've also got the half gallons in which I only use two tea bags but basically you just fill that up with water uh, I use hot water just to help I like my tea really strong so I just use hot water and I basically just fill up this jar with water and let, I get the tea bags wet so that they'll sink and uh, not just float at the top of the of the tea jar uh, so that they have more time to get the tannins and the flavor into the water. Now some people might not consider this strong but I really enjoy it at this level. Uh, my son likes putting in five bags. And so, there you go. It's a jar of sun tea. <laughs> you see the tea bag right here. Now all you do is I take this and set this outside and I usually let it set outside all day. I always have one jar in the fridge and one jar cooking. We go through about three quarters to a jar a day of tea so it's just a good cycle for us so when I bring this in I'll put this in the fridge and it'll be chilled by the time uh, the other one is empty sometimes if you get it sealed really tight you can actually get the, the dimple to suck in when it cools but basically after it's done cooking uh, when you bring it in from the Sun say 
8, 10, 12 hours, depending on how you like it. Just pull the tea bags out, close the lid, stick it in the fridge, let it chill, and then serve over ice. So again, thanks for watching. You all take care. God bless.